Now, let's talk about pattern of a cervical dentinopathy. There's a focal or unilateral disease when you think about it, uh, think about cancer or infection. So look for inflammatory reactions or edema, and look for potential primary tumor. And we now know that how the lymph node drainage pattern based on the primary site. Uh, you look for level two, three retropharyngeal lymph node, and five would be most likely head and neck primary, but if you lower neck lymph node, look for systemic disease. Central compartment lymph node, or you think about thyroid or hypopharyngeal cancer. And the inflama can be diffuse or it could be focal, so this would be a little tricky one. And uh, diffuse bilateral node, as I mentioned, lymphoma, leukemia, sarcoidosis, and also perhaps the HIV uh, infection also give you a diffuse bilateral lymph node. Uh, and in addition, there could be uh, some systemic disease such as TB, infectious mono, cat scratch disease, and so forth. So those systemic diseases will give you a bilateral diffuse cervical lymph adenopathy. So let's test that. Uh, this is again very big, uh, the tonsil masses, this bilateral nodal disease, and a very homogeneous appearance. There's no cystic change, there's no calcification, there's no extra capsular spit despite the large size. And this is a case of lymphoma that I show you. Now, there's a little bit of audience participation where you can think in your mind. Is it cancer or infection? Is this the systemic or local regional disease? Just ask yourself. So case number one, there's a mass in the oral cavity as well as extending to base of tongue. And there is a nodal mass with a central necrosis. So this would be a local regional disease and it is cancer or infection. It looks like a tumor is very visible and obvious. So this would be a cancer unilateral nodal disease, metastasis. Another case, there's a big base of tongue masses on the left side, but there's a contralateral nodal disease. As I mentioned, uh, base of tongue, oral pharynx, supraglottic larynx, nasal pharynx. Those give you a bilateral nodal disease. So this is a contralateral metastasis with the sun necrosis. And also unilateral or same side of the primary tumor, there's additional nodal metastasis. So the bilateral nodal disease uh, from cancer. So this would be a cancer and, uh, oops, sorry. So case number three, this is the, uh, uh, the patient with a very large tonsil with a striated and stripe appearance. And there's a nodal masses on the neck, but there's a, some edema. There's an inflammatory reaction uh, and surrounding subcutaneous fat. Sort of the, when you see something like that, you think about more infection or inflammatory changes rather than cancer. So this patient has a strep infection with reactive cervical lymphadenopathy. So this is the infection that's the regional. So this is unusual cases that patient had a nodal neck mass. This is an adult patient. It looks more like inflammatory changes. There's a stranding fat, and there's subcutaneous fat, and there's a thickening of the platysma. It looks inflammatory. But when you look carefully, there's a base of tongue tumor. So this patient has a the base of tongue tumor with metastasis, but there is a superimposed infectious inflammatory changes. So you have to be careful. Just because it looks like an infection, you need to still look for any primary site, particularly for adult patients. Uh, this is a very obviously enhancing cervical lymph nodes. Notice bilateral, huge nodal disease, level two and five, all the way from really skull base all the way to supraclavicular fossa. This is a case of Castleman. When you see diffuse bilateral lymph nodes everywhere, think about some sort of systemic disease. Another diffuse cases, it's a bilateral diffuse patterns of systemic disease. Think about, as I said, lymphoma, leukemia, sarcoidosis, HIV. This is a case of a sarcoidosis. And then this is the same patient, chest CT. Notice there's are some uh, changes associated with sarcoidosis. Next cases would be the, um, the uh, MRI scan of the patient with a T1 hyper intense nodal masses. So as I said, there's when you see the T1 hyperintense nodal disease, think about papillary thyroid cancer 
or hemorrhagic cooling filter metastasis from melanoma or renal cell. This is a case of papillary thyroid cancer. So that will end the part two of my talk. Thank you.